As fighting between government forces and an armed militia group rages on in Sudan, nations from around the world are rushing to evacuate their diplomats and citizens out of the country. This says the Biden administration is hailing a dramatic nighttime rescue of nearly 100 American diplomats and personnel over the weekend. And I determined that the deteriorating security conditions in Khartoum posed an unacceptable risk to keeping our team there at this time. Officials say the daring mission included members of the Navy's elite SEAL Team 6 traveling 800 miles by helicopter from Djibouti to the U.S. Embassy in Khartoum. Once there, the team was on the ground for less than an hour. The National Security Council saying President Biden gave the green light Friday after it was deemed safe and feasible was very well planned and seamlessly executed. But an estimated 16,000 Americans remain in Sudan, with the NSC now stressing conditions are not safe for a larger evacuation. The safest thing for Americans to do is to shelter in place uh, and to not move around too much of the city of uh, Khartoum. Tamir Mohammed's two children, dual Sudanese American citizens, stranded there with their aunt. If they have a nightmare, they said the uh, military are, are coming, they will kill us. Still, the U.S. says they're supporting dozens of other Americans making their way out via U.N.-led convoys by having U.S. reconnaissance drones flying overhead. It's the 10th day of the bloody power struggle between two rival generals with more than 420 people killed and nearly 4,000 injured. The Sudanese people are not giving up on their aspirations for a secure, free, and democratic future. Neither will we. Despite U.S. efforts to get the two Sudanese military leaders to end the violence, officials say the fighting is not letting up. Meanwhile, a U.S. AID disaster response team has been deployed to help the ongoing humanitarian crisis. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington.